At the turn of the 20th century, Virginia could lay claim to 100 covered bridges. Fewer than 10 of these historic structures remain. But these rustic relics are more than attractive links to the past. Covered bridges have proven themselves to be both enduring and endearing. The craftsmanship on these bridges is quite good. These structures still have their capacity to fascinate modern folks. For the next half hour, we invite you to pull off the express lane and take a relaxing ride on the back roads of the Old Dominion as we tour the covered bridges of Virginia. Each year, on the third Saturday in June, the tiny Patrick County community of Woolwine nearly doubles in size. The annual Covered Bridge Festival draws a healthy mix of locals and visitors, some traveling hundreds of miles from out of state. The event provides a rare opportunity for visitors to pick up Covered Bridge t-shirts, flags, keychains, tote bags, and photos. Lots of photos. One can even purchase his or her own covered bridge, in miniature that is, and there are opportunities to travel over a covered bridge in a horse-drawn wagon. But what is it about these wooden relics that sends hearts aflutter in ways modern bridges cannot? Why aren't people lining up to have their picture taken on a concrete bridge? Well, everything later is built by a state standard or an interstate standard but most of them are pretty much alike. If you go over the top of them, you don't see anything different. Covered bridges, to me, are more interesting. And Leola Pierce should know. During a career as an engineer with the Virginia Department of Transportation, she worked with hundreds of modern bridges. In 1993, she saw her first covered bridge and that encounter ignited a passion for the historic structures. She has spent her retirement writing a book on covered bridges and forming Virginia's first covered bridge society. Leola Pierce is hardly alone in her fascination. Covered bridges have always seemed to have an allure to the public. Often, admirers affectionately call them old ladies. Folklore and superstitions abound when it comes to covered bridges. They are sometimes referred to as wishing bridges. According to legend, if a traveler made a wish before entering a covered bridge and held his or her breath while passing through, the wish would come true. With luck, the bridge was a short one. Sometimes these structures were called kissing bridges. Their secluded interiors afforded courting couples of the Victorian age the rare opportunity to share an intimate kiss while hidden from a disapproving public. In these cases, the longer the bridge, the better. In fact, one of the uh, older articles in a highway bulletin cites the fact that if deviltry got out of hand in the covered bridge, the local authorities would sometimes take the sides off. Of course, there's all kinds of wonderful legends that the, uh, the covered bridges were built to, um, so the, uh, the horse couldn't see the water and spook at the, at the running water, or that it was shelter for um, courting couples. Actually, the, the truth is, is much more uh, mundane, that this was a way to keep, keep a wooden bridge from rotting out quite so quickly. The covering on the outside is purely protection. Uh, it was used, I think, probably because at, as these bridges were built, there were no preservative systems, creosote or anything maybe like that, widely available to them. So they, they covered them up and, and uh, protected them in that fashion. I believe that the earliest examples in Virginia are about uh, eight, the 1820s. I mean, certainly we have some, some good documented examples from the 1840s and some from the 1830s. By the late 19th century, you start to see some larger landowners that are building their own private bridges. And this continues right up into the uh, 1920s in Virginia. The Reynolds Farm Bridge in Giles County is Virginia's most modest covered bridge. Measuring a mere 36 feet, 
The bridge is located on a private farm at the foot of a picturesque mountain ridge. It was built in 1919 and provided the family of the nearby farmhouse with a crossing of Sinking Creek. Though modest, this old lady has had a few makeovers through the years. A peek under the structure reveals steel beams salvaged from a nearby bridge demolition. These members were added in 1980 to give the covered bridge some added strength. A few years later, the eroding stone foundations were shored up with concrete. Today, most of the traffic she carries has four hooves rather than four wheels. The farm has been in the Reynolds family for generations. The farmhouse, believed to date to about 1850, has been abandoned for many years. The covered bridge and sinking creek keep it company. The majority of bridges are never covered in Virginia, even when we're all in the uh, wooden trusts era. The counties uh, would sometimes put the money forth for a covered bridge, but these tended to be much smaller in, a, in the general scheme of things. You have to think that many of these county road bridges were extremely modest. They're a little one span, maybe you know, 30, 40 or so uh, at, at most uh, foot bridge. It, it, they look almost like a little shed that's been put over a creek, and that's what many of them were. The Bradley, or Lynx Farm, covered bridge was built in 1912 and derived its names from the former and current owners of the adjacent land. The 49-foot-long bridge carried traffic from a county road over Sinking Creek. Though in a rural setting, the Lynx Farm Covered Bridge once saw a significant amount of traffic being on one of the main roads to the nearby Mountain Lake Resort. By 1949, traffic had increased to the point where a new two-lane concrete bridge was constructed just upstream. But remnants of the old route are still visible, most notably, of course, the Covered Bridge. Now located on private land, the covered bridge wears her age proudly and still carries the occasional traffic from Lynx Farm. If she seems to sag a bit in the middle, she must be forgiven. After all, she's nearly 100 years old. Bridges that you see in this country, uh, the covered bridges, are generally wooden trusses. Uh, they vary in sophistication depending on the size of the bridge, frankly. Uh, the smaller bridges could get by with design devices that, uh, that would drive an engineer crazy because the truss simply didn't work logically. We've got several different kinds. You've got, of course, uh, the town lattice truss was actually patented. And that looks like literally lattice work. It's got uh, large members running at about a 45 degree angle. Every bridge builder had a good ax man that uh, chopped down the trees, shaped the timbers, uh, made the, the uh, connecting pins and things like that. And most of the people who built these were master carpenters who had built barns. Uh, the workmanship was, was quite good. The Bob White Covered Bridge is a lady of mystery. Resting under a canopy of thick trees and mountain laurel, she seems perfectly content to reside in the shadows of a steep hillside by Smith River.
There are, however, a few things we know about this mysterious lady. The Bob White covered bridge is 80 feet long and strengthened by a concrete pier at its center. This allowed the bridge to carry traffic from a county road until it was rerouted over a modern structure in 1981. The Bob White Covered Bridge derived its colorful moniker from a nearby community, presumably named after the distinctive quail. The bridge was built in 1921 by Walter Weaver, with help from his son Ed, both local residents. For reasons unknown, they constructed diagonal sheathing on the inside of the structure. This hides the trusses from view, darkening the bridge's interior and further adding to her mystery. It is no coincidence that the heyday of covered bridges in Virginia was immediately before the age of the automobile. In the first decades of the 20th century, the Commonwealth's roads saw more and more autos and fewer and fewer covered bridges. They were fine for uh, roads in the time when Virginia was largely rural, when the loads were generally wagons carrying uh, goods and, or farm products from place to place. But when you get into modern times, you find that the, the loads are limiting. Plus the fact is that a covered bridge with its portal has a very limited access area. And when you replace such a bridge, you often have to use the same site or you tend to use the same site, which means you've got to take the one bridge down to put the other one in. And oftentimes in the case of small bridges, you can realign to the side and, and get across and, and save the bridge itself. Such is the case with Jack's Creek Covered Bridge. It once carried traffic from a county road, but now stands silently beside its successor. Built in 1914, she was in use until the road was rerouted in 1932. In the years that followed, she stood fast by the side of the bridge that replaced her, close enough to be fanned by the breeze of passing vehicles. For the next four decades, the 48-foot-long structure remained a quiet vestige of an earlier day. In 1973, the Patrick County Board of Supervisors succeeded in having the bridge registered as a historic landmark by both state and national agencies. A year later, the Virginia Department of Highways, now VDOT, gave the old lady some new life. The heavy oak timbers that had kept her standing through years of neglect were shored up with metal rods and tension bars. Like her younger sister, the Bob White Bridge, the Jack's Creek Bridge wears a diagonal sheathing inside, keeping her truss hidden from view. This is not the only way she teases visitors. Despite her name, the Jack's Creek Bridge actually crosses Smith River. She was named for the adjacent Jack's Creek Primitive Baptist Church, which takes its name from a stream that empties into the river about a half mile below the bridge. I know that in the 1930s there was a survey done and at that point uh, VDOT had control over about 50 covered bridges but then eventually the majority of course were uh, replaced as automobiles, as trucks came in and as the weight limit became uh, too much for most of these bridges. Once you got to the mid 20th century people did not want the few remaining covered bridges to go away I mean, maybe they'd have to be taken off of vehicular traffic, but they did not want them to be destroyed. And probably in the case of covered bridges, uh, 
people see them as being very romantic and people uh, tend to make pets out of them. The Sinking Creek Covered Bridge is a pet belonging to the people of Giles County. Built in 1916, she carried travelers along Clover Hollow Road across the picturesque stream below. She remained in use for nearly a half century before the road was rerouted and a new bridge was built in 1963. For several years, this pet could not find an owner. The neighboring property owners never bought the bridge or its adjacent land when it was taken off public right-of-way. Eventually, the 70-foot-long Lady in Red became the property of Giles County. The adjoining land has been converted into a well-groomed wayside. Old glory in hand, the Sinking Creek Bridge invites guests to leave their names, preferably not on her rafters, but in her guest book. She welcomes strangers from near and far. This is one old lady who does not object to taking compliments. Individuals and businesses are encouraged to purchase honorary bricks leading to the bridge's portal. The proceeds from these sales help maintain the site. With a fresh coat of paint and her stone supporting walls reinforced with new concrete, the Sinking Creek Covered Bridge is definitely a pampered pet. Not all of Virginia's covered bridges were diminutive structures built to carry limited traffic over small streams. During the 19th century, substantial wooden bridges were built. I would just like to have been there to see how they put them together and how they erected them. Because how can you erect something 200 feet long? I and mean, that's a pretty long way. And especially over a raging river or even if the river was just flowing, they're usually a whole lot deeper. I have, could not imagine. In 1817, Theodore Burr patented his revolutionary arch and truss design that dramatically increased a bridge's load-bearing capacity. By employing the graceful Burr arch, covered bridges could now be built longer and stronger. The old covered bridge in Bridgewater was a remarkable testament to her builders and the efficiency of the Burr arch. Erected in 1878, the structure was trumpeted as the longest single-span wooden bridge in the world, nearly the length of a football field. In addition to transporting travelers over North River, the bridge acted as a massive megaphone bellowing the sound of hoofbeats far down Main Street. This picture, taken when the bridge was being dismantled in 1917, shows the Burr Arch that had only been visible in the bridge's interior. Fortunately, Virginia still has an excellent example of a Burr Arch, the Memes Bottom Covered Bridge in Shenandoah County. Built in 1894, it's the only historic covered bridge in Virginia that still supports the traffic of a public road. However, being a one-lane bridge, she does necessitate a certain amount of driver courtesy. The Memes Bottom Bridge is also unique in that it is Virginia's longest covered bridge, spanning 204 feet. The Burr Arch is supported by massive stone abutments that extend 10 feet below the North Fork of the Shenandoah River. While this picturesque lady reflects strength and stability, she has a vulnerable side. On Halloween night in 1976, vandals set fire to the Memes Bottom Bridge. The resulting blaze devastated the structure. Her roof and sides were badly charred. Her floor and joints were beyond repair. One of the first people to see the damage was VDOT's Ken Smith. We came and visited the bridge and, and made an assessment on how badly damaged the, the bridge was. It was it, we thought it was beyond repair initially. 
But the fire that devastated the Meme's Bottom Covered Bridge also kindled the passions of Shenandoah County residents. They refused to let go of their local landmark. It became a cause celeb, uh, the local folks certainly spurring it, and the General Assembly passed a bill that uh, took money off the top of the transportation allocations and funded the, uh, the restoration of the bridge with the direction that we would restore this bridge. We would not build a new replica. This would be a major challenge to VDOT. The bridge was older than the department itself. VDOT engineers had no experience with fire restoration of timber structures. Ultimately, the dilemma led to an innovative solution, one bridge on top of another. We felt like it was very important uh, both for, for history purposes as well as for public safety and people that are driving across the bridge to make sure that traffic loadings uh, have minimal impact upon the old historic structure and it's actually carried into a newer bridge underneath. Under the bridge is a steel and concrete structure to ensure that traffic loadings do not uh, overstress the timbers uh, well, the, the local folks were, were very proud of it, and there was a ribbon cutting and a parade the day that uh, it was open to traffic. Uh, the bridge that, uh, that you see behind me uh, is remarkably unchanged since the restoration project. Fires and freeways aren't solely responsible for the disappearance of Virginia's covered bridges. Dozens of others have fallen prey to the combined efforts of Mother Nature and Father Time. The greatest cause of bridge collapses, even in modern day bridges, is scour, is the water washing out the supports or a flood coming and pushing the bridge off its supports. What happens though is that you will see the bridges, um, the covered bridges, particularly set up on the more prominent streams. If you have a very large flood, the power of the water will just catch the bridge and uh, find enough re resistance that it literally can wash the bridge off its moorings. And this actually happened as recently in Virginia as, as the 1990s when we lost the Marysville Bridge in Campbell County. Humpback Bridge is a survivor. She is the grandmother of Virginia's covered bridges. Her unique design has captivated the public's imagination since she was built in 1857. And on a warm summer day, the bridge supplies a bucolic backdrop for one of Virginia's most inviting swimming holes. Humpback Bridge is unique in that her truss was built upon her supporting arch. Only two surviving covered bridges in America employ this type of design. From the portals, the deck rises four feet at the center of the bridge. Despite the rarity of her design, surprisingly little is known about the bridge's construction. While many other bridges of the era were designed by local craftsmen, Humpback Bridge was the creation of professional engineers employed by the James River and Kanawha Turnpike Company. The 100-foot span was one of the many bridges built along this important route in Western Virginia. The advanced design of Humpback Bridge speaks to the talent of the Turnpike engineers. Considering her builders had only mid-19th century tools and technology, Humpback Bridge becomes even more impressive. On the curve, all of the posts are perpendicular to the floor. So they are flared, so to speak, as you go around. Even the portals are leaning forward. That would be difficult too, to, to build on shore and try to get it erected. And I cannot imagine how they got all of that up and built with the water underneath it. It's amazing. Humpback Bridge survived the Civil War and the numerous floods of the past century and a half. Her raised flooring and tall stone abutments have spared her from the high water that destroyed so many of her contemporaries. She carried highway traffic until a new steel bridge was built in 1929. In the years that followed, she was leased to a local farmer who converted the bridge into what may have been the world's most unique hay barn. 
course, this is frequently a great way to keep a covered bridge or an old house, a vacant house. That you keep hay or grain in it, and, it's, and that way you are assured that somebody will be worried about keeping a, a good roof on it. Now, in the 1950s, there was a, a very good cooperative project that was undertaken by the community and the Department of Transportation to develop a wayside around that bridge. It still acts as a pedestrian bridge for the wayside, and there's interpretive signage and a little bit of history for the bridge. So uh, Humpback is, is still performing uh, much of what it was supposed to do. Uh, no more horses and wagons, of course, any, any, anymore. So what is it about a covered bridge that beckons us like a siren song? Modern bridges can be attractive, but they often dominate their surroundings, drawing attention to themselves. By contrast, covered bridges are much more humble. Being built from native timbers, they effortlessly and comfortably blend in with the landscape from whence they came. Perhaps covered bridges represent qualities we want to see in ourselves. They are durable and dependable, steadfast and strong. Like us, covered bridges cannot be accurately judged by merely outward appearances. We have fascinating stories to tell anyone who takes the time to look inside. Covered bridges, like people, have their blemishes and defects. But these imperfections give us character and make us more interesting. Covered bridges cross more than rivers and streams. They span centuries. In a world of people rushing to the future, covered bridges whisper to us and remind us of the glories of days gone by. <laughs>